Hey there, performance management students. If you are watching this video, it probably means you're stuck on mix and yield variances. Well, in 10 minutes, I'll have you unstuck. In this video, I'll take you through the theory, then I'll show you how to perform the calculations. Now, if you like my explainer videos, be sure to check out my revision course and my premium video library. I've got virtually every topic in PM covered by a quick explainer video like this. If you have any requests for new videos, drop them in the comments below. And guys, let's rock on. Today we're looking at my imaginary business, Steve's Juice Bar, and my new delicious product, the Sparkling Mango Drink. Now, we're here to learn about the mix and the yield variances. We'll use this simple business and this simple product to illustrate all. First step when we are doing variance analysis is to understand how much one unit should cost. And as you know from MA, that is called the standard cost card, really simply the budget for one unit. And my sparkling mango drink has two raw materials. We have mineral water, that's W, and mango juice. Now, from an exam point of view, it's very helpful and useful to understand which is the more expensive ingredient and which is the less expensive. So we can look here and it's the water will be the cheaper of the ingredients. The mango juice is the more expensive. That's going to help us a bit later. Okay. And in order to understand the cost card, we have to look at how much of each material goes into one unit. And my sparkling mango drink takes five liters of mineral water and I pay one dollar per liter for my mineral water and my mango juice I use five liters of input for mango juice and that costs me ten dollars per liter yeah I know what you're thinking that is absurd but suspend your disbelief let's just use five liters as a round easy number so we can do this activity with mental math okay so we're now going to understand how much one unit of sparkling mango drink costs so the water will cost us how much everybody five dollars Okay, the mango juice costs $50. Okay, so total cost to produce one unit of sparkling mango drink or one glass of sparkling mango drink is $55. Everybody, that is an important concept. That is the standard cost card, the budget for one unit. Now, the whole purpose of this is to control costs. And we need to understand now how much actual production cost. Okay, so first piece of information that we need is the actual output, the actual amount of sparkling mango drinks produced and sold, everybody. Actual is two. Wow, that's terrible, isn't it? We will evaluate sales performance with our two sales variances, the sales volume variance and the sales price variance. Right now, we're trying to understand how much should two drinks cost, how much did two drinks cost? So at this point, we could answer that question, couldn't we? Two should cost 110. And I'm going to give you some more information right now. I'm going to tell you that two drinks actually cost $100.60. Well, look at that. Production cost less than expected. That is great news. So we're happy. We would like to understand what we did well so we can replicate those good results next time we make drinks. 
Let's get down to business now, understanding the mix and the yield variances. In order to do that, I'm going to give you some more information and the actual amount of water, of mineral water used to make our two drinks was 14 liters. The actual amount of mango juice, eight liters. And of course, when we went to our supplier, we found that the prices had changed, okay? The water cost us 90 cents per liter. Mango juice, the price increased and it cost $11 per liter. Okay, so the total cost of our water, $12.60. Total cost of our mango juice, everybody, 88. That's how we got to $100.60 for the two drinks. Okay, the first reason that our costs, the first reason our two drinks were less expensive than planned was because of this, everybody. We paid a different amount at our supplier. This is the price variance, everybody. That's the same price variance that you met in paper MA. And we're not looking at that now, okay? But that is the first variance. That's the first reason actual cost is different from standard cost. Now, let's understand the mix variance, everybody. The mixed variance, we're looking at the ratio of the inputs and 10 liters total goes in. Here you need to understand what's the cheap stuff, what's the expensive stuff. So the water is the less expensive ingredient, the mango juice the more expensive, and we see that the ratio of the inputs should be 5 to 10, 5 to 10, or 50-50. One-to-one -one mix. Guys, let's look at the actual results. We see that 22 liters were used to make our two drinks. Let's focus on the ratio of the inputs. And we see a different ratio. Not one to one, but we see more of the water, less of the mango juice. If it was one to one, it would be 11, 11. Okay, look at that. They used more of the water, less of the mango juice. Guys, did we use more or less of the cheap stuff? We used more of the cheap stuff. So the mix variance, everybody, is favorable. Let's look at the yield variance now. And to do that, I want to look at the amount of material that was used in total terms. So, it should take 10 liters to yield one drink. Therefore, it should take 20, 20 liters to yield two drinks. Guys, how much went into the process to get our two drinks? 22. So look at that. There was an inefficiency there. Either they wasted some material, they spilled some material, or they were inaccurate when they created their drinks and maybe they filled the glasses too high. Okay, but we see a, an adverse yield variance. Let's now summarize all of this. We said from our standard cost card, one drink should cost 55, so two drinks should cost 110. How much did two drinks cost everybody? Not 110, but 106. So we found a favorable total direct materials variance. And now I have a question. Why? What led to that favorable variance? And we said there were three things. The first reason is that we simply paid a different price, a price that was different than expected at our supplier. And that is the price variance. We're not looking at that. 
The second reason when we have a multiple ingredients is the mix variance, everybody. And we said that the mix variance is about the ratio of the inputs. And in our simple example, we said the ratio should be 50-50, cheap to expensive. And what did we see? We saw that the production manager, either intentionally or unintentionally, did not follow the mix. He used a ratio of 14 to 8, cheap to expensive. So, so we found a savings there, an economy. Now, that might, hurt, might, have, might have hurt the quality. We're not answering that question yet. We're only looking at this from a simple financial perspective. Okay? We also said that we produced two drinks. And let's look at the yield variance, everybody. So we said that 10 liters of input should yield one drink. Okay, so in our example, 20 liters of input should yield two drinks. We didn't get that, did we? It took 22 liters to get two units, didn't it? Good news or bad news, guys, that is bad news, okay? So our yield variance is adverse. Either we poured larger drinks or we spilled some of our material. Either way, the yield variance is adverse. There you have it. Mix and yield. Mix variance is looking at the ratio of the inputs. Did we use more or less of the cheap stuff versus the expensive stuff? The yield variance is looking at the outputs. How much input did it take to yield our output? Guys, there you have it. That is the mix and the yield variance in a nutshell. Hopefully that shed some light on this topic for you. At this point, please go back to your notes or your textbook and have another look at this topic. Hopefully it makes sense for you. Bye for now. This is Steve signing out.